In Creole Parametric, you can create forms in a sheet metal part which represent modifications to geometry typically by pushing, pulling, and cutting. Before you watch this video on die forms, I recommend that you watch my video on punch forms as I will mainly be covering the differences between the punch form and the die form. Similarly, I recommend that you watch my videos on sheet metal forms from PTC, punch form reference models, and forms with inheritance because again i will be mainly covering the differences and i will touch on aspects from all of those different videos if you go to the form drop down list you can see that you can create punch forms die forms sketched forms and quilt forms quilt forms is grayed out because i don't have any quilts in my model there's also a flatten form command that is used when unbending models. But again, we're mainly going to cover die forms in this video. To show you the differences, I'm going to create a punch form first. Let me click on the command and that will open up the dashboard. The first thing that I need to do is to select my source model. I will use the open icon and it goes to my working directory. In the load point, PTC provides a number of forms for you. And as I showed in my sheet metal forms from PTC video, I've set my config.pro option to point to that. That's why I have this punch form library command available to me. I will select it. And here are the different forms that come from PTC. Let's select the close flat louver form in millimeters. I will click the open button. You can start seeing a preview of the geometry on the screen from the form. First, I'm going to select the surface that I'm going to place it on, and I'm going to select the bottom surface. Let me query select to that, and then left click on it. And now I'm going to define my offset references. Let me use the right mouse button to get to my offset references collector. Let me select this small surface. You can start seeing a preview of the geometry. Now I will hold down the control key and select this surface. Let's go to the placement tab. I'm going to add a rotation about the first axis. Let me punch in a value of 180 degrees. Let's modify the dimensions. Let me change this one to 40 and change this one to 60. Before I hit the check mark, I just want to point out again that I picked the bottom surface of the model and the form reference model that I'm using is intersecting with my part. I'm pointing that out for a reason. I'll touch on that in a moment. But let's hit the check mark to complete placement of the first form feature. There you can see it in the model tree. Now let's go to the other command, the main command that I'm going to cover in this video. Let's go to the die form command and I'll click on that. And once again, I need to select my source model. Let me click the open icon. And again, because I set a config.pro option, I have the ability to select forms from a die form library. And here we have the list. And it's very similar to the list of forms from the punch form library. Once again, let me choose a close flat louver die form and hit the open button. And there you can see a preview of the model. Last time I picked the bottom surface of the model. This time I'm going to pick the top surface of the model. And let's once again activate our offset references collector. Let me pick this surface and let me zoom in and use the control key to pick that small surface. Let's change this to a value of 40. Let's change this one to a value of 120. And once again, I will go to the placement tab. Let's add a rotation. Let me try 90 degrees. That's good. There you can see a preview of the geometry. And I want to point out again, I picked the top surface of the model as opposed to the bottom surface. And my form is not intersecting with my sheet metal part. If your form ends up intersecting with your sheet metal part, then your feature is going to fail. And I didn't cover the dashboard because I covered the dashboard in another video. Here you have your different placement methods like by interface or manually. Here we're using coordinates with the offset coordinate system. Here we have copy from source or use inheritance. I covered use inheritance in another video. You can use inheritance if you want to change the dimensions 
of the form from the reference model. Let's say I wanted it to be taller or wider. Hey, use inheritance and vary the dimensions. Let's take a look at a, a difference between a punch form and a die form. If I go to the shape tab, there is this collector here for the die shape. One difference between the punch form and the die form is that the punch form is going to use all the geometry from the reference model. With the die shape, you have to select which surfaces from the reference model that you want to use. And because I used one of those sheet metal forms from PTC, it had that information already defined for me, so I did not need to select it. And there's also an options tab where you can choose to round sharp edges, exclude surfaces from the die model. And again, because that was set up in the reference model, I did not need to select that. You also have the ability to select a coordinate system that represents the location where the part should be punched uh, with your tool. And there's a properties tab where you can change the name of the feature. But again, the big difference between the interface for creating a punch form and a die form is from the shape tab where you have to select the different reference surfaces that are going to be used in the die form. But that's good. Let me hit the check mark and you can see the feature created in the model. And again, they look the same, but one was created with a punch form. The other was created with a die form. Now, let me talk about the reference models that you use. And I want to mention the other difference between using a punch form and a die form. Here is a reference model from a die form. And with a die form, you can have multiple different forms in the same part. And the other thing is this has to be a pocket. So with a die form, it's a pocket. With a punch form, it's typically going to be a protrusion. So again, we have a cut in this model and we have multiple different forms placed on the same surface. If you are creating a reference model for a punch form, you can use the geometry from one surface or the opposite surface. You can only essentially have two different forms in the reference model of a punch form, whereas with a die form, it can have multiple different references. And so let me use this one in order to create a form in my previous part. Let me go to that particular model. Let's go to the form dropdown list and choose to create a die form. And for the model that I want to use, let me use the open button and I will grab that from my working directory. And here you can see the part over on the side of the screen. This did not have the necessary coordinate system in order to create an offset coordinate system in it. So I'm going to locate it manually using constraints. Let me pick the top surface of the part and that's going to coincide with, let me see, oops, that will coincide with this surface. Let me use the flip button to change that. And then let's pick, let's see, let's use this surface and I'm going to select this surface over here. Let's change that constraint from normal to coincident. Then let me flip that one as well. And for my last constraint, let's select this surface. And I'm going to define that as being a distance from, let me use that surface there. Let me drag it about over here. And let's change that. Let's use a value of 100 and hit the enter key. So there I have it located in the model. Now I need to go to the shape tab and select the geometry that I want to use for the die shape. And let me remove what it automatically selected. I'm going to use the details button to open up the surface sets dialog box. I'm going to click the add button so I can select an anchor surface. Let me tap the right mouse button until that little surface highlights. I'm going to change the method to seed and boundary for the bounding surfaces. Let me pick this surface from the reference model. And oops, I think I got the wrong one. Let me remove that. Let me tap the right mouse button to get the bottom surface of the model and click the OK button. So you can see a preview of the geometry that's going to be used for this operation. 
and now I will go to the options tab for the surfaces that I want to exclude. Let me pick that surface. And now you can see a better preview of the resulting geometry. Now I will hit the check mark. And so that way I've created my new form in the model. And again, I want to point out that the reference model for a die form cannot intersect with the model and you have to pick the surfaces from the reference model that you want to use. And I want to show you how you can use an annotation feature in order to specify which surfaces should be used in your die form reference model. Again, I covered this in another video, but let me show it here. Here is my reference part. It has a pocket in it. Again, just remember, die forms have to have a pocket. With a punch form, it's typically going to be a protrusion. So let's go to the annotate tab and then I will click on the annotation feature command. And there's an option in here in the toolbar where you can specify your sheet metal form model properties. I will click on that and then for the die shape, well, let me use the detail button in here. Let me add a set and I'm gonna pick a reference surface and then let's go to seed and boundary. Let me pick my boundary surface and then I can click the OK button so you can see the surfaces that will be used there. For the excluded surfaces, like if something was going to be cut, let me choose this surface and then click the OK button. And so in that way, I have my different references set up. Let me expand the surfaces over here so you can see that we have our individual surface, our seed and boundary surface set up for that. And so now let me click the OK button and down at the bottom of the model tree, let me go back to the model tab. There you can see the annotation feature that is set up. So now I can use this as a reference model for a die form and it will automatically select those different surfaces when I place it in a model. So there you go, the differences between a die form and a punch form in Creo Parametric. I hope you find this useful.